Hey, I think I made it before the clock turned to 11.31, which is a slight miracle this morning. It's been one of those mornings. Um, we have Hurricane Elsa just starting to hit us, which it's not, it's not a real big deal. Just a lot of rain, breezy, and Carter loves the rain. So if it's not thundering and lightning, we often let him go out in the rain. So he was just doing laps around the pool, getting soaking wet and loving it for about half an hour or more. And so then we came in and I got my my hairstylist back this week. Marisol is not at camp, so she did my hair and he of course was hungry so and freaking out. So I had half an hour to get food going and get dressed and I just came in the room here and I've been reviewing my notes, so I have a lot of ideas of things to talk to um, to all of you, but I'm just feeling like a little rushed to get here, but I am feeling pretty good about the fact that I've been able to say I will be here at a certain time, and I've been able to do it now for three weeks. Oh, well, this is the fourth week, I think. Hi, Lisa. So... Where do I begin? There are times when I just feel like I want to just take my brain and like implant it in someone else because there's just so much and I want to convey so much and I know that's not possible. So that's what I'm trying to get better at is distilling things down. Hi, lovely lady. So I posted a little while ago on my page that I know the world is overwhelming in you know, how, wherever you get your information from, whether it be a news source um, on the television or a lot of people get their information now from social media, it can get overwhelming really, really quickly. And I said, I'm getting better at dealing with the overwhelm and I have a lot of ideas about that. So that's one thing I want to share with people. So I have been really lucky when I look back on my path in a lot of ways and I just want to remind you of this path that is called the Rise Up Transformation Adventure. Thank you, Lisa, for the Transformation Adventure. And the Chi B means something to me. Chi is um, like a Chinese concept of energy, of life energy, and B. So you can see the Chi helps you remember Q for questioning, I for incubating, B for birthing, and E expanding. And so over here on expanding, you can say, see how people feel. In this stage, you feel confident and connected with people who love and support you. You know being yourself leads to the most satisfying life and you feel empowered and focused on taking out your growth and that of your community. So I think that sounds pretty amazing, right? Who doesn't wanna feel that way? And I think the question is, how do we get there? And so that's, in my mind, what I've been breaking down on my journey, how, when I felt that way, which I have several times, and right now being one of those times, how have I gotten there? Um, as far as, like, what are some things that people feel that when they're not feeling that way, when you're not feeling confident and connected, maybe you feel scared or anxious. Maybe you feel alone or, like, there's not many people that think like you. Um, so those are things that I can really relate to. When I look back on my parenting journey, I remember being so nervous about, you know, even visiting with family and friends when I felt different, that I did things differently and just worried about how I would deal with that scenario. Um, so, overwhelm. We all feel overwhelmed. And I think that I, apprehensive, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, apprehensive is one way we feel when we are under I know that I can be overwhelming. So for example, today I posted um, a really long post that I wrote nine years ago. And one thing that was frustrating about blogging is I had all these amazing ideas I wanted to share and it often felt, or video, people are stressed or tired or they have a lot going on. Um, so one of my goals with the Rise Up community is to be the opposite of overwhelming. I do not want this to be another overwhelming commitment. 
And one friend that joined actually talked about how that was one of her concerns, like she knows she overcommits herself. And honestly, this is not gonna be a huge time commitment. We're gonna keep it really simple and we are going to break it down into easy steps. So I was talking to my mom this morning, as I do most mornings, and I talked about how she's really good at that. She says, you know, I'm gonna do this and this today. Today she's making a pie and she's playing golf. And she's gonna feel good at the end of the day. My mom has one good day after another, and um, she's talking about joining my community, which, to support me, because that's what my mom does, and I love that, and I know it will be valuable for both of us. Um, does she really need it? I don't know. I don't know if any of the people that joined it need it yet because there are some really kick butt people joining my community. Three to be exact. We have three members. Um, and I am so excited to work with these people because I know I am going to get as much out of it as they are. So back to this overwhelming idea. I know I can be overwhelming and I'm, I think I'm getting to a point now where I, I'm just understanding better how I can help people without being overwhelming. One of the biggest things is right now in the world, we're all confused about, confused, confusion is a huge thing right now. We're confused about what the truth is. We're confused about who's right and who's wrong. We're confused about um, the way forward. What do we do next? And to me, what I have really come to this conclusion is that we don't need more science. We don't need more, what was the other thing I'm thinking of? Um, we don't need more news. We don't need more information. We need to get to some core bedrock philosophies. And if we can all agree on some core bedrock philosophies, a lot of problems will just evaporate. So I've had 15 years on this journey of slowly growing, slowly changing. Um, I've been able to adapt and think and test all these ideas. I've been able to talk to people that loved me and that I felt safe with and people that I could trust, especially my mom. And even no matter how much I overwhelmed her, she listened. She always listened. And that's what we're going to be creating is this place of, of listening, deep listening and acceptance that is just going to help people so much as they take whatever that next step, step forward is for them as we unplug from old ways of being, old ways of thinking and step into a new way that is just going to benefit not just us individually, but as a whole. So now we're feeling this need more urgently. The past year, the past almost 18 months has really been turned so many of our lives upside down, turned the world upside down, turned everything we know that we thought we knew upside down. And so we feel this urgency to take action. But with that urgency, we also feel the overwhelm again. And a lot of us just shut down. We just, we're so overwhelmed or we're so obsessed with looking at what's going on that we can't take that next step forward. So I've had the luxury of having 15 years, 15 years to just take my time, you know, slowly learn how I've been conditioned and work at undoing that conditioning hypnosis. When I learned about hypnosis for childbirth and how our minds work, how our subconscious works and how television, we are in a state of hypnosis Everything that we see, our subconscious takes as truth. Whether you know in your head it's not truth or not, your subconscious is taking those messages in. Now think on this. A lot of us have seen a meme that says, imagine if everyone just stopped watching the news and stopped watching the television. What would happen? A lot of us agree that 90% or more of our problems would literally evaporate overnight. Because if we lived in our present reality, if we lived in our homes, if we lived in our communities, if we went out into those communities and just were present and just reacted to what's in front of us, what's actually happening right there, we wouldn't have this fear-based um, reality. What does the news feed on? They feed on fear because we keep coming back. We keep clicking. We keep tuning in for more. They're banking on us living our lives from emotion. So we have this urgency. We know we need to change, but we also may feel stuck and we might feel overwhelmed. We might feel obsessed. 
so what do we do? What do we do? There's that question again. I was talking about that last week. What do we do? What do we want to feel like? Do we want to feel scared every day? Do we want to feel anxious? If we don't want to feel anxious, why do we keep tuning in to the news? Now, I'm not saying that you can't be um, tuned in, okay? You can. You can be tuned in. I am probably more on top of the news now than I've ever been in my life. I'm more informed. That's the word I'm looking for. But I don't need to be tuning into that 24 hours a day. And even the people in, quote, my community that are like-minded with me, I see a lot of us just wanting to keep seeking more, and I get it. Last year, I could just, I kept seeking more, 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 more. I want more, more information. I got to know the truth. I got to get to the bottom of this. What if the way forward isn't more information? What if it is us coming back to ourselves, to our intuition, to living our best lives, and we're showing other people, how do you do that? And then they begin to see, oh my gosh, I don't want to live this way anymore either. I want to live in a new way. So first thing you have to do is you have to identify what you want. What do you want to feel? How do you want to live? What makes you feel good in your life? And are you actually doing those things? Are you spending time with your family on a regular basis and disconnecting from the world and just appreciating your children or your mother or your sister? When you feel calm and content, do you want more of that? When you feel confident in yourself and what you believe in, do you want more of that? So yeah, I blogged for ten, almost 10 years now and I've had a lot of people tell me how much they have learned from me. I've had so many people thank me. I had people that I didn't even know were reading tell me, you have no idea how you've impacted my life. And it's always beautiful when that happens and it's very encouraging. But I'm really ready now to make a bigger impact. And that might, might look smaller. It might look like these three people that have signed up with me. But it's going to feel huge because I'm going to know what impact. I'm investing and they're investing back. That's an energy exchange. So if you're on the fence about this, this is low risk. This is very low risk. I am not one to be upset if someone like joins and then a month or two from now, they're like, this is not for me or I no longer feel I could spend $10 a month on this. That's not going to come between me and another person. So this is low risk. It's a low risk way for you to have this transformation in your life. I know it's hard to see, but this transformation can be slow. Like for me, it's been 15 years of transformation, but it can look fast too. The person I am now, six months after moving to Florida, actually five months, it will be six months on the 18th. I feel like a different person. I'm happier, I'm more present, I'm not obsessed with the news and what's going on in the world. In fact, I could almost care less about a lot of it, although I still, I still hear it. I hear it from my husband and my mom, and I still check in on people that I know give me good information. How was I able to make that transformation in six months? That's a relatively quick time. Now, sometimes transformations seem fast. They seem so quick, but they're not really. You know, It was a slow buildup, and then all of a sudden, it seems like something happened. So can I help you with that transformation? I think I can. So let's look at this again. Questioning. In this stage, you're curious, but you may feel anxious and alone. You may feel stuck. You may feel scared. Let's look at this incubating phase. So in this stage, you're starting to move again, your energy. You're feeling more hopeful and excited and more intentional, but you may not ready, be ready to share openly and this is a time of protection. Sometimes you still feel overwhelmed and it helps to find a safe person or community to confide in. Incubation, I think, is super important. Um, sometimes we think being quiet is, being, is hiding and there are times where it is hiding and then there's other times when protecting yourself is absolutely the right thing to do. When I was pregnant, I knew that was not a time for me to be getting into debates. It was a time for me to protect myself and my unborn child and to be really healthy. So there's a time for incubating. There's a time for all of these stages. Um, birthing, 
and I called this birthing. Now, men, obviously, you can go through birthing stage. This is just the name of the stage because it's transformative. It can be intense. It requires a lot of letting go. You are starting to feel more confident in sharing your beliefs and also in living in alignment with them. But this sometimes leads to pain and grief. You know this is part of the growing process and you trust it is leading to a beautiful new phase in your life. I really feel like I went through that this year. Um, it probably started for me in 2019, to be honest. Um, 2019 was part incubating, part birthing. This past year has been so much about letting go for me, letting go of the life I thought we were going to have in Virginia, in the home that we bought, with the friends that I had made. I had to let go of friends that just didn't, I didn't jive with them anymore. They weren't able to see my perspective on the world and to them it felt dangerous. I felt dangerous, so they cut me off. So I lost friends. Um, we lost, we kind of lost our home. We still own it, but we moved away, which was, was one of my fears. And sometimes we have fears and then it actually happens and it's like actually the best thing that could have happened for us. Um, because here's the deal. Human beings, we don't like change a lot and we don't like taking risks, but sometimes that's absolutely the best thing that we can do. So they, they can bring about shifts in us. So what do we do? Again, what do we do? That's the question. I can tell you what we don't do for sure. We don't keep doing the same thing over and over and over and expect something to change, right? What do they call that? They call that the definition of insanity, right? And how many of us do that? All of these things I have done in my life and I will do them again. This is not like, you know, you get to some nirvana and then you stay there. These are life lessons we learn over and over and over again. And they're a whole lot more fun to learn when we do them with someone. And we self-correct a lot faster when we have others with us to remind us what is the way. So we don't do the same thing over and over again, right? That's why moving was a powerful catalyst for me to change. Mike and I start going on walks twice a day and those walks oh my gosh, we ranted and ranted and ranted against the world and everything going on. And for a while I said, we should stop talking about COVID-19. We should just stop talking about it. Did we stop right away? No, we did not stop right away. We talked about stopping and then we kept going. And know what? Now we're talking about it a whole lot less. Some changes take time. And sometimes you have to dwell on them and you have to think about why are they beneficial to me? So we have to do something different. And honestly, I think the biggest challenge for me right now is helping you understand, if you're on the fence about this, two things. One is that I'm not special. Okay, I am special, right? But so are you. I'm not superhuman. I don't have something that you don't have. Okay, yes, I have made some really um, different choices in my life and in my family's life, which has led me to this point. But that's the point, they were choices. So are you, you know, you could read my blog post and say that really resonates with me, but are you gonna commit to making a change? That's the question. Are you going to make one small change in your life today that over time you realize, oh, that felt good, I wanna do another change? None of this is impossible. It may not be easy all the time, but it's pretty simple stuff. It's simple stuff. So we're not gonna keep doing the same thing over and over again. We're going to take steps, like make a goal, a small goal. Maybe for me, it's um, I wanna start doing yoga again. And when I'm in this community, I say, I'm gonna do it once a week and I commit to it and I start doing it. I posted on a group recently to, to let them know about my um, this community I'm trying to create and a really nice gentleman brought up that it's off-putting you know to ask for money right away they don't know me they don't know who I am if they can trust me and I get that that's why I'm perfectly happy with three to four members to start because these are people that trust me and they know you know I'm the real deal and I have to prove that to other people so he was talking about that and then he he wrote this really long paragraph about all the things that we can do as a community. We can 
basically create this whole new world, right? Where we support each other. We grow our own food that's free of um, pesticides and chemicals. Um, we create our own, quote, healthcare system where, you know, we use um, maybe alternative methods. Maybe some people are doctors, but that we, where we respect choice, right? We create this new um, community that just supports each other. Maybe we live actually together in like, you know, cooperative type situation, or maybe we don't, but we create this network, this community of a new way of doing things. And he listed all these ways and it's amazing and I agree with him. But what I personally think is that most of us see that and that's what we want, but we're scared and we're overwhelmed and we don't know how to get there. So my whole thing is let's start taking one step at a time, whatever that small step is individually, and we will be amazed to see where that leads. I don't know what else to tell you guys. Um, I am just really, really excited and happy that I'm taking a risk myself. Um, <clears throat> two months ago, I didn't even have this idea in my head. Seven weeks ago, I made my first post in the course um, about starting a membership, and now I'm launching. Tomorrow, the, cl the doors close, and it's like, wow, seven weeks, that's amazing. Um, I invested quite a lot of money in taking that course, um, but for me, it's worth it, whether this is a huge success or not. It's worth it because it changed my life energy. It shifted my focus. It made me healthier and happier. And if I'm healthier and happier, that's good for my family. That's good for my community. That's good for the world. That's the takeaway for me. We all need to start making a choice, one small choice that leads to another small choice that leads to bigger choice to make us healthier and happier. Let me know if you're feeling that urgency. Like, you're like, I need utopia on earth. I need, um, <laughs> I need something new, something different. How do you want to feel? What are the ways that you want to feel in this world? Again, I am not superhuman. This is not something that anyone else can't do. Everyone can do these things. Um, one of my beautiful friends shared a story of something she did for her daughter to help her daughter earn money. They made a lemonade stand and they made, what did she say? They netted $90, I think. I think they made 150 and they had spent $60 on lemons and, and materials. So this little girl is going to use that money to um, get some horseback riding lessons, which she is just obsessed with horses and the family didn't have it in their budget. So now she's getting horseback riding lessons. And the response to this story has been incredible. People are just so touched by this story because it is a beautiful, beautiful story. And what I told my friend is, it is, it's amazing. And she needs to write it down and she needs to keep it and remember it. But what this story so shows me is that all of us could do this. We could do this with our children. I'm not trying to make people feel guilty that don't do these things. The point is we all have choices and we all make those choices. And so if you find someone that inspires you and that helps you make better choices, then that's a person for you. If I'm that person for you, come with me. That's my point. Low risk and I, I'm just super excited about this. Um, yeah. I think that's it for today. Oh wow, I have four people now. <laughs> I hope that if you have any questions, you let me know. Um, like I said, I sometimes I just wanna pour my whole brain out so you guys can see every connection that's in there. Um, I talked with my mom this morning. It was more a record. We often talk for an hour. I think it must've been pushing an hour and a half. And I just had a couple really good long rants while I spoke with her. Um, and she's like, a couple of them, she's like, you need to write those down. And one of the big ones was this idea of the greater good and how we have been conditioned to accept that there's collateral damage and because it's a small number of people, that's okay because, because we're told it makes the whole stronger. Now, 
from my personal experience, I have learned that this is actually turned upside down and I'm going to explain why. What is good for the individual is what is good for the whole. If, you, if I get healthier, if I get stronger, if I get happier, that makes our community stronger. On the other hand, doing things to individuals that makes them sicker, that maybe kills them, or makes them unhealthy or unhappy, that does not make our world stronger. And it's very obvious when we put it this way. But I'm telling you, there's things that have been conditioned into our brains and we unwittingly reinforce those things with our habits. When we continue to, to tune in day after day after day to the news, to our Facebook feeds, to the doom and gloom, when we continue to reinforce that the world is going straight down the tubes and that's all we see, we're not helping the world get out of that mess. So... I really think the answer is simple. That um, Jim Gale, I just started following him. He's um, into food forests. And he has a quote, and I'm, I'm not going to remember the exact quote, but it was something about how the world has a lot of complex problems, but the solutions are simple. And that is absolutely true. Why is the world complex? The world's complex because we are complex. But we have the same simple needs, and... The solutions are simple. So I'm really grateful for all of you. Um, you have two more days to join our community. I will be opening the doors again in the future, but after those two days, I'm gonna pour my heart and soul into the people that join me and into creating something rock solid. Um, so that when I open doors again, we are gonna have so many stories to share and so if you're not ready now, that's fine. Continue to follow me here on Rise Up with Susan May. I have a YouTube channel. Um, I'll continue blogging on togetherwalking.com. And really reach out to me if, if there's anything you want to know more about. Um, here's the difference between what I'm offering here for free and on my blog is that it, it is messy. And you can see it's, me it's messy because it's all tangled up. And what I'm offering for people inside my community is ne it's neater. It's, it's less complicated. It's going to be a step-by-step -step process where you actually get results in your life because you're committing to it and I'm committing to it and we're taking those small steps. And so that is so powerful. I have seen in my own life these past few months how powerful that is and until you do it, you won't really understand how transformational it is. But I hope you join me. Please um, reach out to me if you have any questions or just want to tell me things you want to know more, more about. And I'll put the link for joining in the comments. Thanks so much for joining me. And um, I may or may not see you tomorrow. It's not a scheduled live, but maybe I'll hop on. If not, I'll see you Friday. Bye.